What's going on, America? This is Kevin in Kevin's Corner. And a lot to talk about. First things first, let's get the Mark Zuckerberg situation out the way. Um, apparently, Diamond and Silk magically have been reinstated. They've corrected the problem, even though it took several months. And then they responded to Diamond and Silk and was quite frank about the way they felt about their material. But now all of a sudden, though, after um, they were exposed on a national level, they've decided to change their minds. It's no longer dangerous to the community for some reason. I don't know what, what maybe, maybe like the Grinch, his heart just, just, it just grew. I, I can't make a heart, but you know what I mean? Overnight, it just grew overnight since Ted Cruz asked about him. And today he, uh, of course, changed his tune. We, we, before we even get into that, we, we made a mistake. We've already, we're on it. We're on it. We took care of it. It's done. Now let's move on to the next thing, okay? All right. What about the rest of us, though, that comes after Diamond and Silk? Um, is their magical um, AI going to determine what is considered hate speech or not? Because Mark Zuckerberg obviously couldn't define what it is. It was, but you know what? That's difficult for people to, the politically correct answer. And of course, some people say, you know, he did a great job under such pressure. Well, it's simple. He appealed to the greatest weakness of all politicians, their ego. Do not resist. Don't fight with your adversary. Agree with them. OK, and that's all he did. You're right. Absolutely. Yes. Well, you know what? We should look at regulation. Oh, yeah. You know what? Maybe we'll consider all the. Yeah, absolutely. I can understand your pain. It's like when you call the cell phone company and you're furious because your service is messed up and then they kind of take away all your ammunition by agreeing with you. I understand, mister. Um, it's, it's, it's understandable how that can be quite frustrating. We're going to go ahead and find out what's going on and we're going to take care of it. And you're sitting there like, but I ain't finished. I ain't finished arguing. And you agreeing with me already. Yeah, that's what he did. He just agreed really quick and got them off his back. So um, we'll see how that all goes over. Now, a lot going on with President Trump. Now, I'm entitling this The Two Temptations of Trump. The way I see it, you always got to look at what the dirty Dems are doing and what the crooked media is doing and what some of the rhinos are doing. Not all Republicans, but the rhinos. OK, whenever they all sync up on one accord, I'm concerned. And they have been pushing that we put our foot in the butts of Syria and Russia for quite some time now. Hillary was pushing for it. The Democrats definitely won it. And a lot of Republicans won it too. And I'm not so sure that we should be so quick to respond over these latest attacks or chemical accusations. I think we should proceed with caution. And see, I'm noticing some Congress is not signing off on this stuff. They're going to encourage Trump to do stuff. And then if it goes too far, and we, it turns into some big skirmish or some drawn out situation over there, or even worse, escalates between us and Russia, then they'll all sit back and say, well, we didn't tell him to go to war with Russia. We just told him to respond to Syria. I don't know what his problem is. He, he goes too far. We told him not to do it. See, you always got to be worried about the person who's instigating and then leave you hanging. Yo, man. Swing on him, dude. If I was you, man, I'd knock him out for real, though. He said, what about your mama? Oh, no, man. You you, you know what? You real sorry if you let him get away with that. Go ahead, man. Swing on him. Then as soon as the fight break out, they over just scratching the back of their neck like, mm, I ain't got nothing to do with this. Uh, I don't want no trouble. I was just, I'm an innocent bystander. And so you got to worry about that. And not to mention, there's some things that make me, my antennas go up. The first time we attacked Syria, Trump was talking about, I think he was talking about either getting us out of there or not getting Assad out of power. That's what it was. Then right after that, accusations of a chemical attack takes place. And they won't let us come in to verify it. So we're just going off of what? Video footage? I'm not sure. And I'm not saying that it didn't happen, but I'm saying we should have the right to question it, especially when we're looking at potential world war. Because depending on how far Russia let us push it, it could get out of control real quick. Um, but then secondly, this the second time, I'm thinking just logically. 
certain things have to line up and make sense to me. And once again, President Trump announces that we're going to be pulling out of Syria. And you would think Assad would say, great, why don't we, since we're already winning anyway, why don't we just lay low, wait until they're gone, and then we can do crazy stuff? Because obviously, the first time we did this resulted in a missile attack. And all that would do was prolong the departure of America if we do something like launch a chemical attack against the people right before they say they're pulling out. Now, all the Democrats, a lot of the Republicans, the media, all of them are saying, we shouldn't pull out, we shouldn't leave, we shouldn't go, we shouldn't this and this and that. And I've learned enough about propaganda, misdirection, the crooked intentions of our government, all types of stuff like that to know you can't put it past anything or anybody. You always got to proceed with caution because when our government wants us to embrace something, they do it a lot of times by creating a problem, creating a crisis, creating something that invokes emotions and makes you have an impulsive emotional response, like seeing kids that suffering from gas poison. And I have to always say, you know, we got to make sure that we are cautious about what is in the best interest of America first, our soldiers, um, our, our economy, all of those things. And as sad as those photos were and the videos were, without being able to 100% verify, because see, none of us as civilians really get the intel. We're just going off of what we're told. But yet we bear the cost. We bear the price when it comes down to war. So we really, really got to be careful. And I'm, I just don't want all of these instigators to push the president to do something and then go, we, we, we ain't had nothing to do with that. He the one went to war. We told you he's a warmonger and he got to be careful and cautious, especially when every time he talks about leaving them alone, a crisis takes place that is directly in contrast to Assad's interests. And I just say, Let's be cool. Let's be patient. Find out what the deal is. Because see, we nobody wants chemical war. Nobody wants chemical weapons and stuff like that accessible to people. We don't want that stuff. But we definitely don't want to go to war over somebody staging something or doing something like that just to keep us over there to fulfill their goal and objective. Then secondly, the second temptation is they are doing their best to set the president up for failure when it comes to firing Robert Mueller. They know that they have nothing on the president. Nothing. Now, it is crazy how all of the channels are echoing, I think he's going to fire Mueller. I dare him to fire Mueller. What you going to do? What you going to do? You going to fire Mueller? Do it then. <laughs> Why don't you do it? Knowing that that will give them some type of legitimacy and argument to say, well, now we can go ahead and impeach him because he's impeding justice. And I hope the ego of the president and the frustration of him don't get the best of him. And he makes an impulsive, emotional decision and fire Mueller. As bad as this is, and we know it's corrupt and crooked, he might have to just bear with this and force them to have to finally come out and admit we didn't find nothing. But I think this is their last ditch effort because they know they didn't find anything to try to get him to do something reckless, to prolong this and say, well, we didn't find none of that stuff, but this dude went and fired the, the special counsel. So now we got to go ahead. That's grounds for impeachment. And if we as Democrat, I mean, Republicans don't come out and vote during the, the, the um, 18 elections and give it over to the, the, the Democrats, the House and the, and the Senate, man, they will just wake up and say the sky is blue. Let's impeach the president. So he has to be real cautious. See, they're trying to get in with the reverse mind trick, the Bugs Bunny Jedi mind trick, where it's like, uh, yeah, uh, Mueller's doing a great job and Trump doesn't like him. And, and I bet you he he's not bold enough to fire him, you know, the reverse mind tricks. But the point is, he needs to be cautious because they're trying to, I think they're trying to set him up with it. And they're doing it by harassing all the people he care about. You know, it's one of those things where it's like, if we can't get to you, we're going to punish everybody around you to frustrate you so much and make it so obvious that we're corrupt. And this is a witch hunt that you're going to do something impulsive and, 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 and do something premature and say, that's it, man. You're done. I'm firing you. So what? 
What are, what y'all gonna do on the president? I can do it. It's, in, it's 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 within my constitutional right, which it is, which they are also trying to get changed um, and prevent the president from doing that. But what's good for the goose is good for the gander, because if they ever get back in power, which I hope the Democrats never do, all of those rules will apply to them as well. Anyway, so I just hope the president does not respond hasty because with the whole Syria thing, man, that could get real out of control. And I would just hate to see somebody stage something, make it look like something or create a patsy, you know, because we've been known to do that. Uh, example would be, uh, what's it? Uh, JFK, we all know, no Lee Harvey Oswalt was able to pull that off by himself. He was the patsy. There's a lot of stuff I get concerned about, even the Florida shooting. I was thinking about that, and I'm saying, wait a minute. You got multiple accounts for people saying they they saw a man in all black tactical gear, helmet, bulletproof vest, and yet this young man manages to, to do that and walk out with the rest of the kids calm, cool, and collective. Nobody said he looked like he was scared, panicking, sweating, nothing. He walks out. One girl says she was talking to him. And still hearing gunshots and yet manages to just shed all the gear. Where'd that go? Where'd he leave it at? I don't know. I mean, did, did they find it yet? I haven't heard about anything. Did they find a gun inside the school? Did they find his tactical gear and his helmet and his bulletproof vest? So there's a lot of stuff that I say, man, I wouldn't put it past our government. I'm concerned when it comes down to them trying to push us into stuff like legislation for gun control right after a crisis or like going to war with Syria right after showing us a whole bunch of pictures of what they say took place. So we have to be very, very, very careful. I would hate to see us overcommit. And I definitely am looking out for the president because, you know, some people out there going, we got your back, man. Hey, president, this is good counsel, man. This is what you should do. You know, and then when he does it, they go, I don't, hey, I don't know why he did that. that was crazy, man. <sighs> anyway, you know, so let's keep an eye on it. I hope we approach it with wisdom and temper. It should be very tempered. All right. You've been listening to Kevin and Kevin's Corner. God bless you. If you like this video, hit like, share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter. Check me out tonight, 730. Um... It will be Kevin's live block block radio talk show. If you want to support Kevin's Corner, there's links in the bottom to do so. Other than that, see you next time in Kevin's Corner.